Hooked on the Game, known in Russian as Na Igre, is a 2009 Russian action movie about esports pro gamers whose gaming skills get transported into real life, by using which they fight bad guys represented by the Russian Mafia. If that sentence did not just pique your interest, I don't know what to tell you. The late 2000s were a strange time in the world of cinema. It's like movie studios really were trying to experiment and just go all out. I mean, the movie came out. Stop laughing, it's not funny. In Russia, the situation was pretty much the same. It wasn't like it is today, which is war movies, bad cartoons, and movies about Gopniks, by Gopniks, and for Gopniks being released. The Russian cinema actually tried to appeal to a young teen audience for once. Now let's think here, what do young teenage boys like the most? That is right, it's video games. Now what would happen if we made an entire movie about gamers? Hmm, that is actually a good idea, said the Russians. And they did it. Wikipedia says that Hooked on the Game, directed by Pavel Sanayev, is the first Russian feature film in the cyberpunk genre. Hmm, must be a wholesome movie then. Anyway, I don't know that much, but it's definitely the first Russian film about gamers. In fact, that was actually the original title of the movie, just Gamers, but the name had to be scrapped because of the simultaneous release of the 2009 classic film Gamer starring Jared Butler. God, imagine naming the movie Gamer in 2020, it like times were really different back then. I mean, I guess Joker's kind of a gamer, but uh, I don't know. The Russian title of the movie, Na Igre, is actually a pun. You see, the cult 1995 British film Train Spotting in Russia is known as Na Igre, which literally translates as On the Needle, referring to the character drug addiction. The title of Hooked in the Game in Russian is Na Igre, which literally means on the game, referencing train spotting. Get it? Na Igre, Na Igre? I mean, that's literally the reason why one of the main characters is plugging something into his vein on the poster. Essentially, the message here is that gamers are drug addicts. Cool title, guys. I remember seeing this film as a kid at the theater and kinda liking it. I mean, it spawned a sequel called Hooked on the Game, A New Level, and an entire TV series called Gamers, with each iteration of this series subsequently getting lower and lower scores. I thought it was pretty cool as an 11-year-old, and with a budget of $3.5 million and the support of the Russian Ministry of Culture, it can't be that bad, right? Well, let's get into it. The movie starts with a flash forward. We see some sort of gang meeting, in which a bunch of Russian mobsters are discussing business. Suddenly, a young man walks into the room and says that he needs to talk to one of the mobsters. Yeah guys, this is a very westernized Russian movie, you see. Even when Russians themselves direct a movie, they still portray the Russian mob as some sort of over-the-top comic book characters. The mobsters are ambushed by the young man's allies and he asks them to listen to him again. The movie then throws us back in time to one month earlier, to some sort of esports tournament going on in Russia, with product placement from a certain Korean Counter-Strike clone all over the place. We're shown a group of friends who are supposedly some sort of pro gaming team that are preparing for the final match, and one of the members is the guy from the flash forward at the start of the movie. The guy has a girlfriend who's a racing game pro, while the rest of the squad are supposed to be CS pros. There is also a fighting game guy that is friendly with them. Before the match starts, a head of some Russian game developer studio that's sponsoring the events is supposed to give a speech. Yeah, you know guys, that seems plausible for Counter-Strike to be replaced with some Russian clone right before the final match and for all the pro players to be completely fine with it. You know, it's not like the way the game plays will be completely different or anything. Uh, Alright, whatever. I just want to say that this CEO pushes his game so hard that he reminds me of someone a little bit. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is, all of this just works. Anyway, after Todd Howard's done talking, the competitive gaming finally commences. Блядь, 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 сука, блядь. Блядь. Первое место. 
Просто команда Грандмастер! After seeing a bunch of awfully animated footage that is supposed to resemble CS 1.6 and some single player Need for Speed Undercover gaming, we finally get the results. The team we saw earlier wins the shooter competition, the fighting game guy wins his tournament, and the racing championship is won by the game studio head's son. Because women can't drive, I guess. Based, uh... Before we continue, let's meet the main protagonists of the story. They have real names that I mentioned briefly, but throughout the entire movie they refer to and call each other by their gamer tags, just because they're epic gamers like that. Okay, first of all we have Vampir, which is Russian for Vampire. He's the unofficial main character of the movie and the guy from the intro. He's supposed to be the brain of the group. Doctor, or Doc, is a rich kid with a dumb haircut who is the hothead of the group. Then there's also Kamar, which is Russian for Mosquito, Jan and Dlinny, which is Russian for Tall, who don't really have anything going for them, they're just gamers. Then there's also Maxim, the fighting game guy, and Rita, a uh, woman? I mean, that's really all there is to her personality, but she's also a racing game pro and vampire girlfriends. Everyone's invited to the stage for the award ceremony. Maxime, the fighting game guy, sees the girl handing out the awards and falls for her in what might be the worst scene I've ever laid my eyes upon. What? As a prize, every single winner is awarded a copy of a new game from the developer studio CEO. While games are being handed out, there are photos being taken, and the CEO himself acts like he's onto something. The entire thing is just very fishy. The next scene shows Maxim coming home, putting the game disc into his computer and installing it. As soon as the installation process starts, all the tech around them starts glitching out, and the speakers produce a sound that makes him react almost like my friends do when I send them my awful Apple Studio beats. <laughs> Afterwards, we get to see some truly insane advanced graphic effects. God, you're so beautiful. God, wow, wow, man. Maxim drifts out to the game world for a little bit and then comes back to see his PC completely ruined. As it turns out, the entirety of the rest of the crew all experienced the exact same thing, and their PCs went bust too. The movie then starts setting up the main villain, Boris, who's some kind of Russian Elon Musk investor that is also doing some shady business that has to deal with buying and selling some sort of mercenaries behind the scenes. He is also working with some FSB guy that supervises the entire process. And it's like, I don't even know where you buy a suitcase anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, how much the, the props <laughs> department spent days yeah. looking for a suitcase. The next scene is the first time we actually get to see what the weird game did to our protagonist. Vampir and his girlfriend come to an airsoft shooting range at a public park, and he gets to shoot some interesting targets. <laughs> And there we have it. Yikes. Vampir gets ready, starts shooting the targets, and... Damn, son. Meanwhile, as Vampir is doing some MLG quickscopes, Maxim also discovers his amazing powers. He sees the girl that was handing out the awards at the esports event near his university and asks her out for a coffee. When they arrive at the cafe, a man sits next to them and tries to flirt with the girl, but she tells him to piss off. Ultimately, the man starts a fight and his friends come to help. Maxim's fighting game mass skills come into play and he brutally beats up everybody in a fighting scene shot as beautifully as the scene of Sonny beating up Carlo in the original Godfather. To be honest, I just feel like the video game theme in this movie is absolutely way too underrepresented. For a film that was heavily marketed as a video gamey movie, it has barely anything to do with video games. I would excuse any dumb plot or bad acting if this movie had truly kick-ass action scenes. Like let's say the fighting scene had some crazy health bar and combo video effects and whatnot. You know, something that would resemble a fighting game like Tekken or Street Fighter, but there's nothing. It all just feels like wasted potential, really. We also get a scene of the entire crew doing paintball practice, jumping around and flying like there's low gravity enabled on the server or something. 
There's really only one scene that is kind of video gamey, and I think it's probably the reason why I actually liked this movie as a kid. Rita, Vampire's girlfriend, as you should remember, is a racing game pro. The scene is basically her just driving a car with Vampire riding shotgun. She's speeding down the streets and cutting between traffic, all while a song from Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 plays, which I can't play because of copyrights. This is actually a really cool choice of music, and with Most Wanted being like my favorite game of all time, I was probably pogging like crazy in the movie theater. The car that Rita drives being a BMW is also probably some kind of reference. The scene itself is dumb as hell though, because they're literally just recklessly driving for the sake of it, they're not even like in, like in a chase or anything. Moreover, Rita being a pro driver now is basically useless, because after this moment there's literally not a single car chase scene in the entire movie. This sucks, because there could have been some baby driver type moments in this, but I guess if you want that, you should just watch a better movie. Meanwhile, the movie takes an unexpected turn. It turns out that the people Maxime beat up earlier in the restaurants were somehow gang affiliated. And as an act of revenge, Maxime is kidnapped by the mobsters in the middle of a highly populated street right in front of a gamer crew. Only in Soviet Russia. The gamers follow the mobster's car and arrive at some sort of warehouse. Service Hazira. Звоним ментам и валим. А то ты не знаешь, чем твой Хазир занимается и как он ментам за документы на ворованные тачки бабло засылает. Они сюда в жизни не сунутся. I really don't get this movie, man. Why the hell do they know all of this? Apparently competitive gamers are not just drug addicts, but also know every single criminal underworld kingpin in the city. Come on, man. The mobster that Maxim beat up first tries to put him in an oven, which is, uh, you know, questionable. But the mob boss catches him and stops him and says that the shipments with the mercenaries has come in. Hazir? Hazir, Hazir. Assalamu alaikum, Hazir. Alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum. How is the Hazir, brother? The gamers head inside the building to save Maxim armed with paintball guns, thinking that there will be just a couple of guards there. Taking the guards out and retrieving their guns, the group stumbles upon like 50 heavily armed mercenaries, and we get our first major action scene. Basically, this entire scene is just the gamers mercilessly killing all of the mercenaries. They aren't just killing them, but also acting like it's all a game and referring to the murdered man as frags. It's honestly incredible. These were just a bunch of regular students like a day ago, and now they're easily able to murder 50 people and also smile and laugh about it. Alright, I forgot that this is a cyberpunk film. I guess it's like deep cyberpunk social commentary on how video games are violent and playing them blurs the line between reality and virtual reality, therefore allowing you to murder people without feeling bad about it. I don't know about this one, Chief. I think video games just make you hate women and minorities, not want to kill people. I wouldn't be surprised if some kid's mom bans him from playing the Xbox after watching this movie, though. Oh, and also, I forgot to say that the gamers were recorded and watched over the entire time by some mysterious men. Remember this, this is a detail that will come up later. Yes, I'm making you remember things to make up for my script writing mistakes, okay? Deal with it. Maxim is saved by the crew and they arrive to a safe place. Maxim, the fighting game guy, is the only character that shows any morality. Even though the crew saved him, he calls them out and says that killing people isn't right. Maxim has an argument with Vampir and decides to leave the crew. Ты такой же, как мы. Из-за тебя мы влипли в историю, непонятно, как она повернется. Короче, решай сейчас, либо ты с нами и больше не ноешь, либо вали отсюда и забудь все, что видел. After this point, the movie storyline starts getting progressively convoluted and even more dumber. You guys remember that billionaire Russian Elon Musk investor we saw earlier in the movie, I talked about him like 5 minutes ago? It turns out that he was actually the one that owned the mercenaries that the gamers killed. Apparently, the billionaire has some sort of Bolivian drug lord friend or warlord coming to Russia to buy the mercenaries, and the fact that they're now dead really ruins his business. In response, the billionaire gets his friendly FSB agent to track down the gamer crew. Anyway, I don't want to waste any of your time or any of my time on a stupid story and play mental gymnastics here, so let me just explain it very briefly. The FSB agent finds the mysterious man that was recording and stalking the gamer crew the entire time. It turns out that the game developer CEO from the beginning of the game knew that the game copies that were gifted to the winners at the esports event were corrupted and would basically turn them into superheroes. Apparently, during the making of a particular 
particular batch of these video game CDs, there was some sort of production system error and they turned into magic become a superhero discs. That does not make any sense, but who cares? The game developer CEO gave one of the discs to his son, who became an incredible driver because he was a racing game pro. And so the CEO decided to also give the same discs to the winners of the event and hire an investigator to watch over them. I am not really sure what the CEO's endgame in this entire story is, it's never like discussed or anything. Oh, and I also didn't mention that the villain of the movie, the investor, lives on a literal zeppelin floating above Moscow. All the information that I mentioned earlier was basically extracted from the private investigator via torture. And once the FSB agent is done with getting all the information he needs, he gets rid of the investigator in a very original way. This is one for the history books. The world's first halo jump. Prepare for drop off. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Spread your wings and fly. God be with you. Meanwhile, Doc talks with Vampyr and tells him that he knows a good way to make some money with their new powers. The crew essentially plans to assault a bunch of criminal kingpins and make them give away a portion of their income. Doc claims that soon there's gonna be much more people like themselves around the world, and they need to seize the opportunity to make some cash right now. Now that sounds like an exciting premise for a movie. An entire world filled with gamers that have gaming superpowers? I'd watch that! Unfortunately, this idea of more people getting the powers that Doc mentions is never mentioned again in the film, so uh, I guess the dream is dead. Well, to be fair, the movie does give some motivation for the heroes to attack the mob though. For example, Doc's father works with the gang kingpin that they want to assault, and apparently the kingpin is a real pain in the ass to his father. Moreover, Vampir also has some history with the mobster that they're plotting on. I didn't want to die my mom, but Matvey thought that on the job it would be easier to get out of water. My father got out of work. If we had money then, I would operate her in Moscow. You need a driver, I'm going with you. Well, fair enough, I'll give them that. As far as the rest of the crew goes, nobody even asks for their opinion or anything, because every character in this movie apart from Vampir, Doc and Rita have zero personality and they don't affect the story in the slightest, so who cares? The gang starts their hits, and the movie arrives at the point at which it started, with Vampir confronting a bunch of mobsters. The crew tries to scare the mobsters into paying them, which is a very dumb move, and the mobsters disagree, so the crew just shoots the entirety of the criminal underworld leadership. That's definitely not gonna cause any problems. As the crew returns back to the car, they realize that Rita, the driver, has been kidnapped. A phone rings inside the car asking the crew for a meetup. Essentially what happened is that the Elon Musk investor asked the FSB agent to recruit the gamers as some sort of special agents. The crew agrees to meet up with the FSB man, who essentially blackmails the gamers into working for him and the investor with all of the footage of them killing people. The FSB agent says that they're all basically going to be working for the FSB now, after which, with the accompaniment of very epic music, the crew gets on what seems to be USS Barack Obama. Vampir's girlfriend is yet again mad at him and goes in on the facts how now Vampir is basically going to be working as a hired killer and she's not okay with it. Okay, cool, it's good that at least someone in this movie seems to care, but uh, uh, she's having this exact talk with Vampir for the second time now, and the argument again just ends with her accepting it and getting herself into this mess even further by agreeing to help. No, what then? We'll be partners. Rita does realize that she is not on any of the tapes that have recordings of the rest of the crew killing people and admitting to it, as she was just a driver wasn't present at all, right? If she really did care about her boyfriend and his gang becoming a bunch of merciless killers, she could have just left and not got herself into this whole ordeal, just like Maxim did. He just left and he's never seen in this entire movie again. But no, I guess that would be too logical for this movie. After all, she's a gamer, and gamers have tiny brains. Literally 5 minutes later, Vampir takes Rita to a fancy restaurant, and I guess now she doesn't care and she's excited for the future of being with a rich hired assassin? Oh yeah, of course, all women really need is money. I knew it. Gamers, rise up! There's also a scene with the rest of the crew partying and uh, it's not good. are you ready for a lesson today? are you ready for your lesson today? No, I'm not ready. I already fucked you! Pain. Meanwhile, all of this is going on, the billionaire's Bolivian business associate arrives to Russia. Hola, ¿cómo estás? 
Bienvenido. Yo soy abogado. 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 L lawyer. To pick up the uh, dinero. Alright, so I find this character absolutely hilarious because he's supposed to be a Bolivian like drug or warlord named Guillermo Mercado, but he's played by a clearly not Hispanic actor, who I checked is actually from Turkmenistan originally. I guess the budget didn't allow to hire an actual Bolivian or at least Spanish speaking guy. They were just like, alright, cool, we don't have a Bolivian guy, so let's just pick the most Asian looking actor we have, tan him a little bit, give him long hair and some stereotypical clothes. Cool, that works. I just find it funny. I mean, what if they had like an African warlord character instead of a Bolivian or something. What would happen then? They just have like a white Russian guy playing them in blackface? I mean, come on. I know I'm exaggerating, but that's honestly not something I would be surprised by if I saw it in this 2009 Russian cyberpunk film. Basically, the Bolivian wants to buy mercenaries from the Russians to take over a certain province in Bolivia, and the billionaire will get some sort of rare earth element called palladium as a result. Yes, apparently a region in Bolivia is rich of this element. Uh, it's never really explained why he needs it and what the element even does, but I'm way past giving a shit about the story at this point, okay? Anyway, the billionaire demonstrates the gamer crew to the Bolivian and sets up a paintball shootout with the gamers and 15 of his best men. And this is the way it's portrayed. Oh, cool, they just uh, didn't show it. I guess the entirety of the budget was spent on the 3D rendering of the Zeppelin, so they just decided to not shoot this fight at all. Long story short, the Bolivian agrees to use the gamers as his mercenaries for his conquest of bread in Bolivia. But a problem emerges. Basically, a rival of the billionaire, another Russian businessman, strikes some sort of deal with the Bolivian government that would somehow ruin everything that's planned. The billionaire and the FSB guy decide that they will give the gamer crew the task to kill the rival Russian businessman. In just under 4 hours, the gamers are able to come up with a perfect assault plan using JPEGs of a building from Google Images and some building plans. Don't ask me how, because again guys, gamers are epic. The crew starts their attack, Doc and Vampir are both sniping the target businessman, while the rest of the crew fakes a car accident to block the traffic and the businessman's security convoy from coming closer to the entrance to the building the target is coming out of. Rita, the driver, is waiting nearby in an ambulance vehicle together with Jan. It is also shown that one of the businessman's convoy cars has his daughter waiting for a minute, which will be important a bit later. You think I killed two kids and a woman? Fuck that! I don't need that shit in my life! As the businessman comes out the building, he's surrounded by journalists who ask him about his upcoming deal with the country of Bolivia. In the interview, he reveals that he's aware of the plot against him, and basically, Vampir just realizes that their gamer crew isn't working for the FSB, but is just working for a gang that essentially just supports militant rebels in Latin America and uses them for their own monetary gain. Да хоть Дон Педро, он сейчас уйдет. Контора не спецслужба, Зарицын просто забирает их паладий. Паладий, Вильерма. Ты прав, убирай винтарь. So, suddenly he's a good guy again now. The idea here is that Vampir is obviously the good moral character, while Doc isn't. But I mean, am I really supposed to empathize with him now and think of how much of a good person he is? Why did he suddenly start caring about this rival businessman that he's never met? What difference does it make to him who gets to run things in Bolivia? He literally killed people in cold blood on a few occasions now and also agreed to start a hit on a Russian mob, essentially sinking to their level, while also completely ignoring his girlfriend's objections to everything that he's doing and bringing her down along with him to the mob. To be honest, after all of this, I don't think Vampir gets to have any higher moral ground here. If anything, Maxim, the fighting game guy, is the only moral character in the movie because he actually walks away from everything when things got dirty. Anyways, Doc decks the hell out of Vampir, grabs the sniper rifle and starts a shootout. And I mean, essentially what we get is just a pretty mediocre action scene. One thing I definitely want to say is that I absolutely hate this editing. It's like they took the original footage and started cropping it in and moving it around erratically with constant zoom-ins to create some sense of tension or something. It's like a first Call of Duty frag movie someone makes when 12 or something. It's just awful. Like imagine if I had some footage and I just moved it left and right all the time and zoomed it in. That's what this basically is. The shootout continues, the gamers make their way to the car where the businessman is sitting at and Doc does the unspeakable. He kills the businessman as he holds his daughter in his arms. Good day, motherfucker! 
The police finally arrives at the scene and manages to shoot down one of the gamers. Vampyr finally wakes up from the punch and starts covering the crew with sniper fire. He then comes down, regroups with the rest of them and they try to escape, dragging their wounded friend with them. Jesus Christ, what is this scene? Why are they speaking so much in a situation like this? Just run, for God's sake. Anyways, the crew is being chased on foot, Doc sees a bus coming their way and shoots the driver in order to block the road for the police cars chasing them. Wow, them physics though. It's really on par with the greatest of Indian films out there, I'll, I'll tell you that. The group finally makes it to the ambulance in which Rita is waiting for them. And as they're getting into the car, Rita gets shot by one remaining police officer. And uh, after that, uh, they just kind of drive away. Nobody chasing them and the police officer just stops shooting. What? Again, at this point in the movie you would expect some epic chase scene, right? But there's not a single car chase scene in this movie. What is happening? They had like a police officer right there who saw that they escaped in an ambulance. How are they able to just drive away like that without being pursued or ambushed somewhere down the road? I don't know man, budget cuts I guess. All I know as a racing game fan is that this was a real waste of having a supernatural driver character in the movie. Anyway, the crew drives back to the meetup point with the FSB guy, but the wounded gamer dies on the way there from blood loss. The FSB guy's goons set the ambulance with a dead gamer in it on fire and drive away with sad music in the background. This is how the movie ends. Oh, and it also says to be continued after the last shot. Quite a cliffhanger. I'm so excited. And that's basically it. Uh, you know, guys, dare I say it's kind of a good ending. I mean, it's kind of a sad ending, which is really not what I expected when I watched the movie for the first time. Usually dumbass movies like this end with like a classic Hollywood happy ending, you know? So it says to be continued, right? Well, as far as sequels go, like I mentioned, there is a second film and an entire TV series that I've never watched. You know, guys, I'm kind of scared to do it, to be honest, because the rating in the first film isn't too high to begin with, but the sequel and the TV show are rated even less favorably. Well, still, whatever this movie was, it's, uh, it's different. I mean, it's definitely a complete cliche from start to beginning, really, but it's also kind of endearing just because nobody would make a movie like this today. But I'm really glad that I watched this movie because there is one thing I can say now after watching it. I am now 100% sure that gamers really don't deserve human rights. But overall, yeah, pretty fun movie to watch. I just really wish that they had a bigger budget here because I really feel like they had a lot of ideas they wanted to do but couldn't because they were just limited to what they had. So yeah, stupid movie, stupid execution, fun idea, and it's actually kind of fun to watch. And guys, yeah, that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this extended look at Naigrie, the Russian gamer movie you've never watched. If this video does well and does not fade into obscurity and get like 10 views and you guys show support for it, I might make a review for the second one. I mean, honestly, you guys have no choice because it's such an obscure movie with zero crossover to a western audience that I don't even think you'd be able to find any English subtitle version online. So you guys are kinda just limited to watching my review of it. Yep, this is how I get ya! Anyways gamers, on a serious note though, once again I hope you guys did enjoy this video in this format, I'll probably be doing more videos like this from now on. If you guys did like this review, please make sure to smash the like button and also support my Patreon, the links are down in the description, it supports my channel, supports what I do on this channel a lot. You guys can also buy my YouTube figurine to support me, the links are down in the description. That is pretty much it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching it and peace out!